Alrighty, so welcome back there guys. As you've seen, we just put the car in the shed, our first time ever being in the shed. And look, we had to make room too. We've got a lot going on in here. We've just got a bit of a rat run right around the car. We had to pack up all our camping gear from the other weekend uh, for our detecting event. And look, we've got room though to put it in the shed now and uh, keep it in the shed and start touching on all the mechanic work and have access to the tools a lot easier. And we're not only uh, touching on the mechanic work though, uh, doing all the servicing, what have you, and we're also gonna finish off inside the car here are putting all our console and uh, all look our center console and our fascia our plastics all down and our trimmings all clipped down I still have not finished all that off yet so being extremely busy we still need to vacuum the rest of the car out or we'll, we'll start vacuuming it out from the mess that we made in there and then start fitting up those floor mats as I said being extremely busy so with work with cars uh, with detecting uh, with kids it's all going on but look we're doing a little bit and chipping away at it as we can and it's come a long way in just over a week so anyway we, uh, we're we going to start on the mechanic work drop all the oil change the filter as I said finish off inside let's get started well, some may have picked up on the fact that when we pulled the car into the uh, the shed before, the uh, drive belt is horribly squeaky. So what we're doing here, we uh, we normally have a little uh, tube of wax, uh, and it's actually properly uh, drive line wax. You know, it's drive uh, drive belt wax, I should say. And so it's designed for this job. However, we don't have any at the moment. We've run out. So what we're going to use, we're going to use a little tea light uh, wax candle, and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to quieten it all down. Let me give you a listen. So that squeaking is literally just from all the grease that we've run on the motor. Uh, sorry, all the um, degreaser. Listen to that, it's already gone. So just applying that wax to the belt, and there's nothing wrong with this dry belt. We can uh, continue to use this. It'll pass roadworthy, no worries. Not really a roadworthy item, uh, but it's gonna be no worries at all uh, for, for running this car for future. So just dry it out a little bit with all the degreaser. But hit him with a bit of wax, tea light candle in this scenario, don't tell Helena. But hit him with a bit of wax and bingo, no more squeaking. So there we go, works a charm. I'm just standing here listening after we put that wax on the uh, the dry belt there and it's quieting it down quite a lot. No more squeaking as you can hear. But can you hear that? Bit of a grinding sound. That there, that noise, is coming from that pulley, from the, uh, the tensioner pulley there. So inside, behind that bolt, there is a, a, uh, a bearing, and that bearing, I tell you what, it's probably dried out and it's flicked all the grease out. But uh, look, to diagnose it properly, to know it's that one, and uh, not this one, or not the alternator, or not the water pump, uh, we do have a bit of a trick, which I'll show you a look. So we don't have stethoscopes handy, but what we can use is a big a long handled screwdriver such as this. So what you do, and uh, look, the longer the longer the better. Now we do have longer ones in there, but this will do. What you do is you sit on the end of the bearing with the car running, be very careful you don't hit the pulley. And like, you can hit it, but just be careful you don't catch it in anything. Uh, but look, what you do is you put your ear to the end of the screwdriver. And if you hear this really like, I know it sounds weird, but the noise will uh, look, go up through the handle and it'll actually you'll be able to hear it really really clearly through the end of the handle so let's have a listen now i've heard that one it sounds pretty bad i must say i know it's hard to um to tell you guys i'm just listening to this next one here this is just an idler pulley and the one below is also the same just an idler pulley right so straight away I'm hearing that this pulley down here has got a very grindy, scratchy noise. The one up above, it just sounds normal. It sounds like a running bearing. And this one here also sounds horrible. So I dare say, this one below, the idler pulley, and the tensioner pulley up above, will both need replacing. So, a bit of a trick, use the screwdriver, poke it in there very carefully, put your ear to the back of the screwdriver, put your ear right here, and you're about to hear what's going on quite clearly. So. I'm going to, for now, just squirt a bit of silicon, uh, WD-40 silicon grease in there into both those pulleys, see if I can quieten them up a little bit, and that'll also tell me if I'm right by diagnosing those two as the correct ones, so, and the ones that we need to replace in future. All right, we've got the oil bucket. Don't mind it too. Don't mind the state of it. It's horribly dirty. 
it's done a lot of servicing. Generally once it's done, uh, it sits outside and I forget to empty it and then the rain it turns all the oil all milky, doesn't it? So it looks like we've done a head gasket in the saucepan there. The saucepan's never ever used for spaghetti anymore though. It's just used for servicing. It's a great oil catch tray or catch pan. So we've got the axle stands there. We've got the car up in the air. One thing I was noticing too there I wanted to give you a look at is our next job and that is cleaning up underneath, pressure washing everything. As you can see, we are horribly dirty under there. It is years of build up all over the sump, all over the power steering rail, uh, rack I should say, all over the K-frame. So look, not today, not now, not here. Uh, we're gonna back it out into the, into the um, driveway there. We're gonna pressure wash and degrease all underneath and clean it all up just like we've done outside. And look, there's still a long way to go too. Look at that, they're all little surface rust, uh, rust marks, rust spots. We're going to get them off with the uh, the cut and, uh, cut and polish that we're going to do later. So uh, basically, we're going to get on the service now. As I said, drop that oil. It's going to be uh, pretty horribly dirty too, I imagine. So let's do it and let's see how bad it is. I don't know how many times over the years in the workshop I heard customers complaining about leaks in their driveway and you know like they just transition over to our workshop and we'd service their car and look you'd, uh, you'd often see when you were servicing it you know leaks around the, uh, the sump plug and generally it was due to the sump plug washer. Whoever had been servicing the car prior had just been using the same sump plug washer over and over and over and over and over again. And look, it's not, uh, well, that causes a leak. It's not the way to go. So we've got the old up the top and we've got the new down the bottom. Over the years, I managed to, uh, look, save quite a few of these sump plug washers and we can generally fit most vehicles that we service. So this one is getting replaced. We're going to go out with the old and put on the new one and this guy's going to live on the car for future. Righto, the next job is replacing the oil filter. We've got a couple of handy little tools to do this, to remove the old oil filter. I don't know how tight it's going to be, but the first off being the claw. And we've, uh, we've repaired this guy over and over again. It's been used for years in the workshop and it's done a great job. And so the next one, I'm going to try and find it. We might just try and find the claw, uh, use the claw first. But the next one is the oil filter strap and many people would have seen that and if you don't have a strap you can just use an old drive belt which I've done in the past. I can't find it, where is it? There it is. So that is the other oil filter remover. We've got two different types and let me show you how to use them. Alright so we need the ratchet for the, uh, the claw, quite obviously because we need a handle. And the claw basically just goes on to, well, let's just use this as the oil filter. The claw goes on to the oil filter, uh, wrong way around, Luke. And it basically grips onto him. Now, the harder you tighten down with the ratchet, the harder it'll grip down. And I've even seen these puncture oil filters in the past. But they are the safest, best method to get off oil filters. They nearly always work 90% of the time, uh, as opposed to these, which often slip around. And they do often have a, uh, a rubber belt inside just to grab that oil filter a little bit better. Uh, these work in the same principle, though. Just going around, uh, tightening up and removing the oil filter. And I would do it down there, but it's a little bit hard, a little bit pokey to get down. But um, look, there it is there, a little white oil filter. We're going to try and show you the best we can. Use the claw, because I think that's going to be the best method. I'll try and get that filter off. All right, let's do it. I'll try and get down there the best we can. Try and show it the best we can. Let's tighten up that filter. And remember, lefty loosey, righty tidy. So already I can see him starting to move. And we'll wind the claw back on a bit more, get another grip. And we might even zoom in there a bit. And you'll be able to see him move also. If it's not picking up on the radiator shroud. So there we go. As soon as we get him a bit loose, we'll be able to remove him the rest with uh, oh, by hand. So some oil filters, you know, most uh, mechanics, uh, they know not to over tighten stuff. And my car especially, uh, and Helena's car, you know, I service a lot of different cars, all the family's cars. And my car especially and other people's cars, I never over tighten anything. You know, it's always a rule of thumb for an oil filter is done up to the seal and then about three quarters of a turn. So I hope that uh, drum's in the right spot. Sounds like it is. 
So remove the oil filter, still coming off. And we'll pick him up, give you a bit of a look at him. Horrible, absolutely disgusting. So that's a, whoops, we're making a mess on the car. So that's a good reason why we're replacing and doing all this work. So now we've just got to get a brand new oil filter, top it up with the oil, and she's good to go for another 10,000 Ks. Well, the next job we're going to get done just very quickly there is the air filter as part of the service. And uh, look, I've already pulled it out. As you can see, it's horribly dirty underneath where it's sucking all that dirt and all the grime. And, and look, even the hay seeds coming through there, but it's doing its job because on that side, it is nice and clean. So you can see where everything's getting, uh, getting caught up. And as I said, it is doing its job quite nicely. One thing I used to love to do while I was in the workshop too, uh, you quickly just knock them on the, uh, on the concrete. And look at that. Look at what's coming out of there. So we are going to replace this. We're going to put a brand new in there. We could blow it out. However, uh, look, this has probably been in there for absolutely years. It is a Secura, uh, so it's an aftermarket. It's not a GM, a General Motors. It's not factory original. I didn't expect it to be, but you just never know sometimes. Uh, look, I've seen some cars and looks from a lot of... Well, a lot of different uh, conditions, so a lot, some really, really bad ones, put it that way. I remember one uh, VT Commodore that I worked on, and I actually took a picture and sent it to Helena, because I could, I just could not believe it. A VT Commodore 2000 model, so even newer uh, than this, and uh, he'd actually, the farmer, had worn a, a hole through the, the floor with his foot, where he'd had his heel, and so he'd worn a hole through the floor there, and on this side, on the passenger side, there was newspapers up to about here. It looked like he went in the town every morning, had grabbed a newspaper and just threw it on top, and he created a stack, and it literally went up from the floor, up on the seat, and it was up about here. It's a wonder it didn't fall over and kill him, or squash him in the car. So, as I said, uh, he'd worn a hole through uh, through the uh, through the, the carpet, and even the floor. You could see see the ground through there and uh, he had a stack of newspapers oh and the cup holder that's right uh, the other thing was the cup holder the vt commodores have the uh, the two cup holders in the middle uh, from, from factory they were full of cigarette butts he'd never put a cup in there he just butted his cigarettes out uh, straight into the cup holders so I said i've seen some pretty wild cars and uh, look, you can only imagine if that's uh, the state of the car imagine where they're returning home to let's get this airbox out though because while we're replacing the air filter, we're also going to remove that air box because look at the state of it. Look at it, horribly dirty. Uh, so yes, it's doing its job. It's, uh, it's catching all the stuff before it heads up uh, the air intake past the MAF sensor and into the throttle body. Uh, so it is doing its job quite nicely, uh, but it needs a replace. And also the air box needs a clean. So let's do it. All right, we're just finishing off a few jobs there, and uh, the first one that we just did uh, was that little button clip on the seatbelt there, as you can see. He was missing, so the seatbelt would, uh, look, this clip would just fall all the way to the seat. Uh, so we uh, actually managed to snap one of those off a seatbelt uh, that we had sitting up there, and we actually have cut these off cars in the past, and we use them for straps uh, to pull motors out, so... Can't even find where I took it off now, uh, but I've taken him off the old seatbelt there, and uh, look, it's worked perfectly. So it's one more piece that we don't have to pick up from the rec uh, wreckers. I have made a bit of a list, so that, uh, that's the first job done. Also, you'll see in the back parcel shelf here, uh, we haven't opted to put that second uh, baby harness uh, seat clip in. Uh, we put the uh, factory original one in, uh, but we're missing, we've got a hole there now, we're missing a clip. So look, once again... Over the years, I saved everything when I was mechanicking in the workshop and also jobs that I've done here at home. So we've got a couple of those clips we can use. We're going to go with grey and not the black one. That'll match the other side, won't it? So we're going to put him in, fill the hole. There'll be no, um, no little clip in there for future. As I said, I still don't know what I'm going to do with this car. I keep it or sell it? I don't know. I'm still undecided. All right, so time to put the new air filter and oil filter back in. As you can see, we've just went down and got uh, got some down from the street, uh, down at Super Cheap there. So, and look, we did not pay much at all. Uh, the air filter was eleven dollars seventy, and the oil filter was nine bucks. So about twenty bucks uh, we've done this service for so far because uh, the oil. Well, I had sitting here in the shed already. So, a bit of twenty dollar uh, twenty uh, W fifty. And that's what we're going to run in it for about the next 10,000 Ks, probably even less, and then dump it out and then replace it. So, why isn't that going down? Oh, clip's in the way. Now the loom's in the way. 
There he goes. Perfect. Bit of a knock. So air filter in. Now the next one to do is the oil filter. Quite an easy one. I'll put a bit of oil on the seal, screw them down onto the housing, and she's good to go. Good to start up, and then we can check the oil level. Well, one thing I did not give you a look at there before is the oil that come out of this car. And as you can see, it is horribly black and dirty. I don't know how long it was in this car for. I don't know how long since Flip's last service. But as you can see, it really does need that replaced. So always good when you buy a car. I've always done this when you buy a car. Even if people told me, oh, look, it's just been serviced, mate. Well, uh, not by me. So I always reservice the cars uh, when I get them straight away. So, or pretty much straight away anyway. I think it's just a good practice to do. So, and then you know where it's at and you know what's been done to it. So let's put the oil filter on. Before we do though, just a good, uh, good tip to remember, always wipe the oil filter housing. So let's do that first, give it a wipe and then bang the oil filter on. Alright, all clean, all ready to go on. The main reason why you do clean up that oil filter housing, and I've seen it happen before, as you get a lot of dirt and debris in around the filter on the housing. And when you screw this filter back up to the motor, up on the housing there, what will happen is you'll screw up all that dirt and the grime onto the thread, or onto the, um, the rubber seal I should say. And when it screws down onto the housing, that rubber seal, uh, all those little bits of grime and even sticks and hay and whatnot, it will make that oil filter leak. It won't give it a proper seal. So he's on nice and tight now. As I said, up to the seal. Can't see anything what I'm doing down there. Have it up to the seal. You butt the filter up till it goes to firm. And then about three quarters of a turn, nice and tight. So oil and the air filter done. Let's get rid of the old. Well, now we've done the oil and the filter. We've got oil in it too, which I did not show. But now we've done the oil filter and the air filter, and we can kick him in the guts and start him up. I don't know if it's enough power though. We, uh, we've been using the interior light in here and we've been uh, using that battery power. I didn't think so. Uh, last time I checked that battery, it was down around 12.1, 12.2. And uh, look, anything below that, it's gonna struggle to start it. So I dare say she's down around the 11 mark now. It's not even giving any power. We're gonna have to put him on the charger. It is too, 11.9. So as I said, anything under that 12 mark is not gonna start a car. So let's put him on the charger. We'll just disconnect him there. We'll get the charger, battery charger set up. I'll put him on the charge for an hour or so. And then we're gonna come back, give him a start and move him outside. Well, we've just finished putting the oil filter on, as you've seen, and the air filter in. Uh, what you did not see is last night we topped it up with 20 uh, W50 and 4.3 litres of pen right there. So, look, we are good to start the car up. We've done all our fluids, our power steering, our oil, our, uh, our brake fluid. Uh, look, we've even done our air and oil filter, as I said. Uh, but the, uh, the battery is kaput, unfortunately. Uh, using the interior light and mucking around with the car, shifting it into the shed here and uh, running it outside, I have killed the battery again. So the battery was never that great. And I look, I understand that. I get that. It's good enough to start the car a few times. But the problem is, and the main problem is, it's got nothing replenishing the power. Uh, the alternator's job there every time the, start, uh, the car starts up is to turn over and basically regulate a certain amount of output back to the battery. It's not doing that. I remember it caught fire. So the alternator uh, is all burnt out inside, I dare say. The regulator burned out. And uh, look, it is not throwing any power, any charge to that battery whatsoever. Uh, so every time we started the car, the fuel pump's been sucking the power. Uh, the fuel pump of the car requires power to run. Uh, so it's been sucking the battery power and the alternator is not doing its bloody job to fix it. So anyway, we're going to take that out in our next video. All it is is just, uh, look, simply pull on the belts there. You can um, put a 15, uh, uh, 15 inch socket uh, on the tensioner pulley and pull it down but I'll, I just generally pull the belt off uh, doing that with my hand slip it over the alternator a couple of 10 mil bolts a couple of 13s one down below and a 13 on the back there to remove your main power wire and we'll get that alternator out in our next video and I'll show you a bit of a look uh, but for today though and for the rest of this video we are concentrating on finishing the servicing and uh, look, we've done everything pretty much in the engine bay there. We've topped up all the fluids. Uh, all that's left now is to uh, basically get around, check brakes, rotors, pads, bushes, uh, everything in between. So we'll do that once it's out of the shed. A few more hours on the battery charger. We'll be able to start it up and back it out.
All right, so the car is back outside, as you can see. We just uh, just put the battery on for a bit of a tickle and just to get enough charge to get it outside. And as you see, we've also put the axle stands back under. We've jacked it back up. And the reason being is because we are now on to doing the fuel filter. And uh, look, this is a secure one. So it's got a bit of a funny number there. FS8006 is interchangeable with Z200. And this was also in the car when I bought it. So big shout out. Thank you to Flip. That's a freebie. And look, they're generally around 30 odd dollars. So it's a bit of a saving that we've made on that one. So really hard to see where they are. Let's give you a bit of a look though. Now the fuel filters on the old Commodores are tucked up just past the fuel tank or just outside the fuel tank and uh, just before they hit the metal lines and run up to the motor. Uh, so we're going to get him out. You can see he's got a couple of little, uh, where is he, focus there? A couple of little um, flathead there screws. We're going to undo them, picking up on my finger, sorry. And I'd undo them with the screwdrivers and take it out, give you the best look that we can. And uh, look, when we get the old fuel filter out, what we do is we get a plastic container, something I always did in the workshop, get a plastic container, we give it a bit of a knock on the ground and then we blow it out backwards and we see just how dirty it is. And I tell you what, with the state of the car and everything else, that is going to be filthy. So let's get started let's have a look. All right, so the fuel filter's on. It took all of five minutes to do, and yes, I got horribly covered in fuel. I even had to take my watch off. Uh, but look, um, just note there, uh, the flow rate there. You can see it's going away to the, uh, from the motor and towards the engine. So the fuel's coming out from the line there, from the fuel tank, through the fuel filter, cleaning all the fuel that we, uh, we put in our tank, and before it hits or heads up to the motor, uh, it's basically going to go through that fuel filter and look if you don't get the flow rate right and not all uh, fuel filters have that little arrow on them uh, Silly silly enough. You would think they'd all have them uh, But if you don't get the flow rate right uh, look it'll still pass fuel It'll just struggle to and eventually you'll end up burning out your fuel pump So probably a little bit quicker than what you would have normally anyway, let's go get a plastic container We're going to knock that fuel filter out uh, what we generally do. We just give them a bit of a roll around I used to do this on the workbench all the time in the workshop. I used to work for a Pedders for many, many years. I said doing suspension and doing brakes and everything like that. We did a lot of servicing too though. So I would do about five or six services a day and not to mention, you know, other, other things in between. A timing chains, motors, gearboxes, diffs, uh, look, bushes, kits, suspension, everything in between. So anyway, let's go get a uh, plastic container and uh, let's see how bad that is. Well, don't mind the plastic container. I've cleaned him up a little bit. He's not all that clean, though. So we're looking for the flow rate once again on this guy, and he's been flowing that way towards the engine. So you can see a little arrow there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to blow him backwards because everything that would have come from the tank would have come through this line here and started trying to pass its way through the filter. Look at that. That's what we want to see. Not really, but it's good to see because you know it's doing its job, just like the air filter there. So what we're going to do now is put our mouth around here very carefully and uh, just blow out a little bit and see all the uh, all the other stuff that we get out you can hear it inside ready so there we go absolutely horror bubble well tastes bad too so look what we can do now what i used to do is i used to leave these on the uh, workshop bench overnight and what will happen is the fuel will all settle and all the residue will settle and you'll be able to see just how much dirt, or look at look at it all. If you ask how much dirt this uh, fuel filter has been collecting, it's really doing its job, isn't it? How cool is that? So yeah, and look, we used to show the customers all the time. My boss was a big advocate for that. You know, we could never ever throw uh, anything in the bin. If we took a fuel filter off or a set of brake pads or rotors, we had to leave them on the workbench until the end of the day or until the customer picked their car up. Because uh, look, my boss would often come out and say, Luke, where's that fuel filter or the, the set of brakes that you replaced? I want to show the customer. I so say he'd always make us do this sort of stuff, you know, just to show what the customer was paying for. So there we go, new fuel filter on and uh, the old one looks horrible. All right, well, that's going to cap us off for today there, guys. I think we've put in a really, really good effort. And uh, look, we've got the car serviced, we've got it out, we've done the fuel filter, and now we've got it jacked back up and uh, put the axle stands underneath the K-frame there. And the reason being is because we're now going to pressure wash and degrease all the undercarriage. And I'm not going to show it, uh, there's no need to show it. But you can see how dirty it is under there. We've had a lot of leaking a lot of oil residue and uh, power steering, what have you. So we are going to degrease everything that we can. Uh, look at that. That's funny, actually. Uh, that uh, that tie rod over the end there, he's got a little bit of a, 
Oh, he's got a grease nipple on him. I don't think I've seen that before on a Commodore. Maybe on a old farm ute, but not on a Commodore. So there we go. We've got a greasable a little tie rod in there. So how cool. But look, we're going to check over bushes, brakes, uh, rotors, tyres we know about already. Two on the front are good. Two on the rear need replacing. We're going to check over everything else included in the service, as I said. Our brake pads, rotors, bushes. And look, I'm sure some of them need replacing. And we're also going to look over for some roadworthy condition items for future because we want to get this car back on the road if we can, possibly, and keep it. So look, the, uh, the, the rubber boots there, dust cover boots on the springs, on the struts, they will probably need replacing. We've got um, spring compressors. We can do that all uh, from home here. Also, the uh, calipers, the slot on the calipers and they've got little slider pins with little rubber boots on them uh, they are seized up by the by the feel look at that the wheel won't free spin it locks up again so those little sliders uh, they're responsible for basically uh, shifting the brake pads in and releasing them again what happens though they get all seized up uh, a lot of dirt and dust and whatnot in them and the grease ends up flicking out and the water ingress gets in and basically they seize up and the brake pads come in when you put the brake on uh, when you press the brake pedal the brakes will come in but they won't let go of the rotor they'll just sit there slowly wearing away and locking up that wheel uh, so probably need to take the wheel off take the caliper apart grease up the sliders uh, clean them all up, grease them all up, put it all back together and that will free spin for days. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. Just have a bit of a muck around. I think that's about it for us today. Uh, we've shown you that oil, air, fuel, uh, we've dumped all the oil, done all the service. Uh, as I said, all that's left is just check over, uh, sight, sight everything, you know, bushes, brake pads, rotors, tyres. Uh, look, just check the condition of everything else. So, And that's pretty easily done. Uh, we all know when the brake pads are worn. And uh, we all know when the rotors need replacing, when they're wobbling or warped or even got a massive lip on them. So anyway, guys, that is about it for us today. I really hope you enjoyed. When we get back, as I said, we are fitting up that alternator and doing a few more jobs as we go. And uh, look, we're also going to do a roadworthy, you know, go over and show you a roadworthy uh, condition items on the car for future and help you guys out there. So anyway, that is about it for us today. Hope you enjoyed. We'll catch you on the next.